Welcome to FMII. We're so excited you're ready to get started. To get to your coordinator site, go to www.fmii.com and then click sign in in the top left hand corner. You'll be asked for your username and for your password. You should have already received an invitation from your coordinator so that you have access to their site. If you've not received one, we, con we suggest contacting your coordinator or you can click here to resend your invitation. Once you create or use a previously used FMI account, you'll be able to log in with your username and password. You can also choose to log in with your Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Google accounts. This will never share FMI information, it just allows you to log in. Also, if you ever forget your username and password, you can click on these links here to retrieve or reset that information. I'm gonna choose to remember my credentials and click sign in. This is your account page. You'll see a list of all the sites to which you have access, including, if they have one, your state site and your RSC site. On the right-hand corner, you'll see account settings. If you click on that, you'll be able to see where you can edit things like your name, your time zone, your email address, and change your password. You will always have this link available to you. I'm gonna click My Sites and go into my DSC site. This is the homepage of your DSC site. You'll see on the left side the navigation with your tools and your prospects and groups. They are further organized as workspace categories and subcategories. I can click on Prospect Hot and see a view of my hot prospects. If I have several, I can click Browse Subcategory to look at a further list. Going back to the home page, you'll see that this is my site snapshot and my sales funnel is showing up right now. This is how I can keep track of my prospect management. I can click on need to follow up and see a view of all of my groups or prospects. I can also go down to the featured pages section to see things that my coordinator made available, like important forms to use. I can go there and download forms or view money bag contests and see the success tracks sign in page where it gives me one click access. So going further down, you'll see the latest activity. Everything on the site is completely private. No one will be able to see your prospects and groups, only your coordinator. You will not be able to see other associate information. It's all based on your account and what you have access to. So you can see the information down here is just my activity or those of my DSC or other agents that have access to my prospects and groups um, because I made it that way. You'll also see the calendar here. You can click on my calendar to view that. We'll go over appointments later. And then people to see my profile page and put my picture in. Going back to the site snapshot, you can also choose other things to view like prospects and groups to see um, how I'm do doing otherwise in my sales funnel or enrollment month. The home page is where everything will be able to come together to give you a visualization of how your business is doing. Now you're ready to start using the site for your prospect and group management. The easiest way to do that is to import your book of business or your own personal list of contact information into the site so that you don't have to add each one manually. There is a video and guide that shows you specifically how to do this on the Aflac support community site but for now I'm going to add one manually so you can see how easy it is. This is what you'll need to do in the future when you get new prospects. So on the home page of the site or anywhere else on the site, you'll always see your prospect and groups showing up over on the left. All you have to do is click on the plus sign. It'll ask for your name. I'm just gonna make one up here. You can put in a description, maybe something important or specific about the business. Um, they, maybe they have two locations. You'll see here that pops up in a green box. It warns you if you're about to add a duplicate prospect. Sometimes you'll come into this if you have a lot of stuff going on. It might accidentally um, add something twice, so it will warn you. Um, this still keeps it private. You won't see other agents' pages in the site. Even if it has the same name, it will only show up if it's something that you have added to the site.
I'm going to scroll down to prospects and groups here and it shows up where you can check it off as a prospect hot. It's very important, especially if you want it to show up in your numbers. And then step two um, says select search labels and custom data. This is only relevant if you're adding a group to the site. Since you're going to be importing those anyway, you won't really be adding this information manually. But if you click show hide options, it'll pop up and you'll see where you can add things like account number, number of employees, active policy holders, and the enrollment month even. Um, but this is stuff that we will not add yet. So what I'll do is I'll just click hide for now. Scrolling down, step three is where you can set up the members and access level. So this turns out um, that this is always private, no matter what. Um, so you will never have to worry about other people seeing your groups or prospects. It will only be shown to others if you specifically change the settings in this section. So it's set to private already. And then on the left hand side, this is where you can give other agents access. You realize that sometimes associates will work together on a prospect, so you want to give the other associate access. So I'm good looking agent here. I'm the owner because I'm adding the prospect, but I can choose to give Casey cool agent access. I can give him ownership access, which is the same as what I have now, or you can just give him read and write. Read and write means that they can't delete the prospect. They can't change things like the subcategory um, or they can't delete things from the prospect's workspace, um, but it still lets them post information and see the prospect in the site. I'm going to click create page and add contact info. And I'm going to add um, Al's information. And I have a phone number for him, as well as an email address. You'll see that there are a lot of options here. So I'm going to scroll down to add contact info. And I just added a page to the site. You can see it takes minutes. It is very, very simple. So you can even put in your own image here. I go up to the action bar here on the right and I choose edit na page name and description and edit page image. So that allows you maybe there's an accidental typo or something like that. And then you can you can upload your own image for Al Fowler Shop. So the first thing you want to do is you need to put him in your sales funnel so that he shows up on the site snapshot on the home page of the site. So I'm going to choose maybe I scheduled a presentation for Al's Flower Shop and it will say update, you know, the page status has been updated. And when I scroll down, I'll see where it pops up in yellow. So especially if you're working on a prospect with another associate, it helps you keep track of who's doing what. So it records the changes I make in the sales funnel. So scrolling down, you can see you can, um, there's an actions bar here. It will let you, maybe you want to edit and add something later on, or you can um, delete it. So this is what shows up on anything you post on the site. So posting a message, file, a link, appointment, task, these things, this is where you post everything about this, is, um, this prospect, and then it will put it down here in the latest activity. So what you'll end up with is proof of your relationship with the prospect, a conversation, you know, recorded data that you and your DSC and a fellow associate can see. And again, this is completely private. No one can see this but a DSC. DSCs are site administrators, so say, they see everything. If you're ever put into a position where you think people are seeing your, your um, information, um, check. Over here on the right hand side, members and access, and make sure, see who can see it. Make sure it says only two people. And then maybe click edit and make sure that right down here it's private. So everything is private for you. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna remind myself to follow up with Al about something. So the best thing to do that, um, way to do that is to go over here to remind me, and you can say one week. And maybe you need to call Al about something. I can even change the time. I'm going to click Add Tasks. So the site will send you an email in a week reminding you to call Al. Once you call him, you can click here on the checkbox. and It'll cross it out and say it was completed. So that is a task. The Remind Me drop-down bar is just an easy way to do it. But if you want a more detailed task, maybe you want to add other people to the task or put more information, just click on Task here in the center. And you'll be able to then type in more detail. Maybe you want to get paperwork ready and you want to give yourself a specific due date. And you want to also include Casey because he's responsible too. So the send alert options here too, so it'll, it'll tell Casey that you set up this task and he'll receive a reminder email too if you set one up.
Maybe you want one an hour before. So that's reminding you and others to follow up. Messages work the same exact way. So that's how you can post maybe a comment. Maybe you talked to Al on the phone and you can post that too. And this is how you can keep your other agents or your DSC. You can click show more and your DSC will show up in the loop. An important aspect of this also is the shared calendar on FMII. There are more details about that. There is a video and a guide all about the calendar, but I'm just going to show you real quick how to add an appointment. So I'm going to type in meet with Al to go over MO138. You can do a more information here. Start and end date. I don't want to meet at 1 a.m. so I'm going to do 1 p.m. and I'm going to send myself a reminder email an hour before so I remember to come. Casey is going to go with me because he's also on this case with me and I'm going to choose to send an alert to the people that are responsible. That will send an email to me and Casey. In that email there's something attached called an ICS file which means if Casey uses Outlook or Gmail or Mail he can open the email, see that attachment, click on it, it'll add it to his calendar. FMI calendar, um, you can view that over here on the left. There's a calendar tab. I'm going to go to my calendar here and you'll see get paper my tasks show up here too and then also more importantly meet with Al to go over MO138. Your calendar is shared with other people so it's a great way to keep track of your DSC when they're available. You can schedule time with your DSC and yes you can push this forward to other calendars. There's more information about that on the calendar um, guide. So that wraps it up with this get started video. Um, we wanted to keep it quick and short. There are more um, videos and guides on the AFLAC support community site. So visit there if you want to go into more detail about all the great features available on my eye that make it you um, easy to manage your prospects and groups and have a successful business.